Okay, I thought I'd get the uh, the before <laughs> shot. Um, Lexan, bulletproof glass, polycarbonate, um, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, there's a brand new four flute high dollar end mill right there. And we're going to mill this with that uh, into that. So that was, uh, there's my test run in MDF, and uh, we're going to try to repeat it in Luxan. So, uh, yeah, okay, hold on to your butts. Okay, yeah, I just, hi, 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 dear listener, uh, I just about, I just about passed out, um, holy dear lord, <laughs> just like, doesn't it, doesn't it make you want to cry, it's so gorgeous, look at, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at, look at, This is, this is right up there with the birth of my children. This is the most, look at those tabs in there. This is, this is the most, this is, holy, holy dear God. Okay, so, uh, I got four more of these to mill. Here's the plans, here's the plans, Stan. That hexagonal shape there catches this coupler nut okay and so there'll be two of these one at the top and one at the bottom with this coupler nut recessed down in there right and then here's the linear bearing linear bearing will press in there okay and then this whole dealie I'm gonna drill a hole right here the size of the coupler nut so that's going to slide through, so it'll sit, where am I, it'll sit like that on the edge of my x-axis here, there'll be one at the bottom with this coupler nut going through the metal and captured on each side by this plate, and then these two holes are through bolts, so we'll have a bearing at the top, we'll have a bearing down here at the bottom, the coupler nut goes through, and the whole thing is clamped together by those two holes there. And that is what it looks like in Lexan. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> All right. Four more. Let's do it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to mill these guys out. They're going to have a dado in them, and this is going to be thinner and, and fit in there. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. Okay. Okay, more milling. Ha 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 ha! Ting! Opera singer ting. How about that? Da -ting, da -ting! All right, that's enough. Click. Uh, 
uh, okay, uh, it's late now, but I got stuff together, and it's incredible. Um, okay, let's start with this guy. First of all, my machine is so dead on, even with a blown out bearing. I blew, this bearing, like, blew out, like, completely, the inner race came out from the outer race. And I think it was destined to be so, but I was probably exacerbated by trying to 3D print with this giant, heavy... Um, Z axis. So, um, so here's what I did. <clears throat> I took, a, sorry, I took a smaller bearing, a little roller skate bearing, and I put a little tape around it so it'd fit in the hole in there. And the inner part of that bearing rubs against the um, this uh, uh, threaded rod. Um, and then the outside race is caught by this little piece of plexi that I cut. And this plexiglass is like a little donut, so it only pushes on the outside of the little roller skate bearing. And then it has a bolt with a couple nuts pushing this rod that way to eliminate the slop out of that blown out bearing, which hopefully will be here maybe beginning of next week. Um, this is not going to last that all long, but the bearing was like 35 cents, so who cares if I have to replace it forever. Um, but this worked. Um, I don't think I want to print with it, but, and I was milling all of this ridiculously slow. Uh, this is like four and a half hours of milling today. So, okay, let's get to the good stuff. Um, these came out perfect. Um, these are, this is a perfect press fit. The hole turned out to be a, like literally a thousandth of an inch smaller than the um, than the bearing, and uh, so it was just just absolutely ideal. Okay, and then there's bolts and there's that little recess, and you can see the um, the two two fifty six screws going through right there. All right, and uh, for my stop switches, okay. Um, this is the uh, extruder, obviously, all right, and then this baby is just smooth as can be, okay? Extruder. But wait, there's more. So here are the end plates holding the rods. Um, again, friction fit. It's, I, I had to hit it with a little bit of like 220 sandpaper for this to slide in. It was just right. Um, I might end up drilling and tapping this for a, um, a set screw. Oh, speaking of which, um, here, this is the, okay, um, edge, this is three eighths, and I drilled it to a quarter inch and tapped it. Um, it's just, it's like, it's so ridiculously perfect. Oh, and this is a mortise and tenon joint. You can see it fits in there, right? So this piece is dadoed into this end plate and then through, screwed from the end, okay? And then as this comes down, I'm going to drill a hole in this end plate and, uh, and thread it for a little um, a bolt and a lock nut, and that will be the adjustable stop for the uh, stop switches. And that will be the same at both ends. Okay, now, even more good stuff. Here is my Z. And once again, bearing holes, perfect. It was a perfect press fit. They're just tight enough. I might put a set screw in there to hold it, but I don't think so. I need to. Now, each one of these, you can see through. See that right there? That's a hexagonal nut. Here's the, um, here's the test cut. So it's a hexagonal opening with a hole going through, okay? It's only half deep. And this, this depth is exactly um, the height of the coupler nut minus this thickness divided in half. So the coupler nut is right there. You can see it in there. And it goes through a hole in here. It's actually not even touching this at all. You can see there's the hexagonal nut through a 7 8 inch hole straight through the frame. And then it's captured <laughs> right there. And it's again, it's just the right height. So when these are tightened down with these two through bolts, which line everything up and go all the way through the frame, it just choop, snugs that um, that hex nut in there, which of course goes to threaded rod, which will are you gonna stay? Okay. Which eventually will go to my motor and um, flex coupler like that. That'll be on the top of the frame. 
and so this needs to be cut off to match my rods. These are the rods for the z-axis and these will go down into a plate. I've got, wait there's more, um, there are my thrust bearings. Um, those are the rotational bearings that these threaded rods are going to sit on so they can spin on the frame below. And that'd be it. I think if I talk too much, I'm going to have, right now, I'm going to have to edit out what I recorded earlier today. So I might call this good. Um, this video probably goes with a post somewhere, probably a blog post. And um, so see if you can get there. Down there are the, um, there'll be a link in the notes if I have this blogged somewhere. And there'll be like still pictures of all this. So, okay, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, Chris the Carpenter, rocketbrandstudios.com. Leave off the triple W for savings. Ding!